Clever International Review. The Asus Port Studio Book 16 is packed in the most beautiful case I've ever encountered. Although the cardboard is scratched on the outside, the more you move inwards, the more seductive the narrow and almost up to the tenth of a millimeter accurate packaging material unfolds its beauty. All elements are wrapped with attention to detail in matte black cardboard and wafer thin foils. The lettering shines in soft splendor, a kind of visionary amphitheater adorns the inner cardboard. When unpacking, the user should be given the impression that they are holding a piece of future in their hands. Asus ProArt StudioBook 16 is equipped with the Asus dial, which allows direct control of screen brightness and volume at the factory settings. It allows users to move back and forth faster through integration with video, graphics, or 3D applications. In this version, an AMD Ryzen processor is installed together with a GeForce RTX 3070 laptop GPU, but of course there are also the latest Intel processors and other graphics chips to choose from. In addition to further paperwork and operating instructions, the connectors at the sides of the laptop come out as follows. Even on the underside of the case, various ventilation slots can be seen, which together with the right and left ones, as well as the air outlets installed on the back of the case, enable efficient cooling. A gently nubbed surface is integrated into the remarkably heavy power supply which fortunately can also be replaced by using the laptop's USB 3 charging socket instead. Now that we have worked through the key data, I would like to turn to the criticisms regarding the design and implementation of the laptop. In this context, however, I would like to make it clear that all in all I am extremely satisfied with the performance and workmanship of the device. Nevertheless, some decisions regarding the final design have been made, which I do not find to be particularly well thought out. Perhaps Asus will take these hints to heart to round off the ProArt Studio Book series even further in a future edition. Perhaps some of these decisions could have been discussed in dialogue with the users before the final series production. The following characteristics do not seem to me to have been consistently thought through to the end. I look forward to a dialogue with you in the comments. Point 1. The inscription for the inputs and outputs on the side of the device is very small and applied in gray matte color. This looks minimalistic, but when the laptop is situated in low light, it is hardly possible to see what is written on the right or left side of the laptop. Instead, I could imagine that these labels are stored with LEDs like the keyboard illumination that can be adjusted in three brightness levels. Maybe this seems a bit disproportionate to you, but in fact I had to look for the appropriate connection point for USB several times in the semi-dark because the air outlet openings installed on the sides have a similar format to the USB sockets themselves. Point 2. Statistically, at least 50% of humanity is right-handed. Some researchers even assume that up to 90% of all people are right-handed. Nevertheless, the right-hand connection for the USB stick was installed in the middle. But the USB port on the left is located further back next to the screen. However, if you connect an external device, example, a mouse, hard drive or similar, the USB plug and the cable connected to it are in the way, especially if a right-handed person moves a mouse in this area next to the laptop. To accommodate both right-handers and left-handers, it would be more pleasant to move both USB ports to the rear near the screen. What do you think? Point 3. 
The keyboard, like the entire laptop, is pleasantly flat and correspondingly high quality processed. It is also nice that the keyboard can be adjusted in three different brightness levels as already mentioned earlier. An important unique selling point of this laptop is the ability to block the camera lens, thanks to the slider built above the screen. Furthermore, the protection of privacy is ensured by the fact that you get visual feedback on the keyboard via the integrated orange indicator lights as soon as the microphone or the camera have been deactivated. Well done Asus, you're on the right track. But it would have been even more logical to insert an orange control diode into the number lock key, which lights up as soon as the number lock function has been deactivated. Because this is the moment when the digit field instead serves the function of four arrow keys, position one and end, as well as scrolling up and down. Every time I move between different applications in which either the operation of the digit field or the operation of the navigation buttons is in the foreground, the visual feedback is missing which of the two modes I am currently in. To find out, I first have to pre-key whether a number or a navigation command is now entered due to my input. ASUS could have solved this with little effort in the same way as with the microphone and camera button. By the way, also the caps lock key has a corresponding additional LED. Point 4. The arrangement of the navigation keys on the digit field. I understand that it may be important for gamers that the four directions right, left, top, bottom are symmetrically distributed in all four directions. Like the F and J on the German keyboard, the central number 5 is therefore highlighted with a small raised minus sign. But there are four arrow keys right next to it at the bottom left which are also clearly different from all other keys of the device due to the hatching embossed there. That is why the double function in the area of digits is somehow superfluous. If the arrows had to be repeated, why weren't they arranged in the same way as at the bottom left? Because of that, the brain, or the hand, now must rethink every time, depending on where the hand is located at the keyboard. This is not intuitive and therefore hardly contributes to a free-flow working experience. My suggestion would be to arrange the arrow keys in the same way as at the bottom left, then position 1 and end would better be arranged horizontal and next to each other. To the right of it, exactly two fields would still be free for the image down and up button. Key 4 would then remain without function instead of key 5. Or I would have found it nice to install the hashtag button right here. Then, for example, a much larger enter key would be available to users. This may reduce the risk of hitting a wrong command with the little finger during the typing process. Be that as it may, now it is as it is. Given the option to buy additional equipment, such as a better thought-out keyboard, which one then were to carry around on the go, there are of course always other ways to optimize these problematic details. Also, regarding the aspect of the positioning of the USB port at the right, you could of course also distribute via a USB adapter to several devices over the second connector on the left. But these workarounds might not be necessary from the outset if thoroughly considered. If ASUS had thought these points through to the end in the first place, we might have moved from an excellent mobile workstation to a near-perfect workstation. By the way, I had developed all text and concept work, image graphics, sound and video editing fluently and directly on this device which testifies to the fact that despite some detours you can penetrate to quite passable results. And this despite the fact that, for example, the end button is stuck in an impractical place and the connectors could be better labeled, 
as explained in point 1. Please write in the comments. How did the computer voice affect you during the video? Do you agree that ASUS should improve the key assignment a bit? Are you interested in anything else regarding this device? Should I make a special video about the operation of the ASUS dial? And please also write what else is floating through your thoughts. Thank you for your attention.